Hoi Hoi, and welcome to the video. I'm Dr. Samaria, not a real doctor, and today we are going to talk real quick about the video topic, which is uh, SCP-999. I'm doing a reading of a tale called New Job by Dr. Chandra. Uh, you can find it on the wiki in a link in the description below. It's under Creative Commons Sharealike Attribution 3.0 license. No, Sharealike Attribution. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I was like, did I get everything? I got everything. The important part, though, is that the reason I'm doing it is because I got one of these. Take a look at that. Isn't he cute? Isn't he cute? Isn't he so, so cute? Give him a little squeeze. Give him a, give him a hug. He's so cute. Do you want your own SCP-999 doll? Do you? Little plushy. Look at his little feet. Look at his little feet. He's got little feetsies down here. Do you want one of your own? You want one? You want one? You can get one, actually. Um, I uh, have an affiliate link in the description. Go down there and buy one of these. It's so cool. Look at this. My hair was so cool. I've been giving him hugs. Anyway, let's get started with the video. Hello, Dr. Collingwood. And congratulations on your new appointment as SCP-999's head researcher. One of the cushiest and most enviable assignments in the entire Foundation. SCP-999 is one of the few anomalies in our custody who will not only never attempt to harm you, but will actively try to save your life if you're ever in any danger. Though your initial reaction when receiving this assignment was no doubt elation, you may have thought it was odd that such a seemingly low-risk position was assigned by the O5 Council directly. If you had already heard rumors of this prior to your assignment, you probably thought it was mere nepotism, the O5s protecting their friends and loved ones by giving them the safest job possible. Unless you're so narcissistic to think that someone on the O5 Council must be your secret admirer, you've likely realized that this is not the case. To understand why this is our concern, you need to know about SCP-999's origins. You may have noticed that its file makes no mention of where it was discovered. This is a deliberate omission. If you're not familiar with the mythology of the Scarlet King, I suggest you read up on him. There's plenty of unclassified information on him in the Foundation database. All that's relevant for now is that he is, to the best of our knowledge, the most powerful, malevolent entity in the multiverse. A good number of our SCPs are either abominations or the creations of mortals he empowered, either directly or indirectly. You've been with us since you were a research assistant, Dr. Collingwood. In that time, I assume you've heard many rumors about some of the more horrific things we do here at the Foundation. And that you've never personally witnessed. Perhaps rumors about an innocent young girl, a victim of a satanic ritual. Maybe you've heard someone whisper the words 110 Montauk. Well, that used to be true. A thaumaturgical cult calling itself the Children of the Scarlet King enacted a ritual wherein seven young girls became effigies for each of the Scarlet King's seven brides, allowing them to bear his horrid offspring. How they obtained the knowledge to perform this ritual is unclear, since all we ever recovered were handwritten notebooks. Superficial resemblances to some sarkic practices, thaumaturgy and human sacrifice, and forming a pact with a cosmic entity, has led some to speculate that the children of the Scarlet King may have some ties to the modern Sarkic cults. 
It's an interesting idea, but no concrete evidence has ever been found to link the two. Investigation into the matter is ongoing. And as for the ritual itself, each birth caused more destruction than the last. The writing of the cult's priests predicted nothing less than the apocalypse if the seventh bride gave birth, which could only be prevented if Procedure 110 Montauk was performed without fail every day. To our seemingly great fortune, the notebook contained detailed instructions on how 110 Montauk was to be carried out. Needless to say, we found this suspiciously convenient. Why would they devise a countermeasure to prevent the very apocalypse they were trying to invoke? We needed more information regarding these entities. Fortunately, our archaeologists have unearthed numerous tablets, scrolls, and artifacts of the ancient Davis. They were a sadistic and warmongering people who were granted unholy power and knowledge by the Scarlet King as a reward for the death and suffering they caused. One of the Davite tablets in our possession found covered in dust and blood was the Theogony of the Scarlet King and his brides. It was quite informative. The information that we found most relevant to our situation was that the seventh bride was not like her sisters. She was never completely broken by the king's subjugation, and instead of monsters, she gave birth to great heroes in the hopes that they would destroy her sister's children and overthrow their father. Thus far all have failed, but by a vote of seven in favor and six against, admittedly, more out of concern for Procedure 110 Montauk's lack of viability as a long-term containment strategy than out of empathy for the girl. The O5 Council decided to believe that the Seventh Bride still remained unbroken and that her child would be an asset to us. At the risk of causing an XK-class end-of-the-world scenario, SCP-231-7 was relieved from Procedure 110 Montauk following the deaths of the other brides and was allowed to give birth. SCP-999 was the result. Go ahead, read that again. Be sure you understand it and all its preposterous ridiculousness. The Tickle Monster is the child of the Scarlet King. Which is why we've been running a counterintelligence campaign ever since, and why everyone thinks 110 Montauk is still happening. Let them think that. Far better for everyone that the children of the Scarlet King believe that they're playing us for fools than for them to know that there is a threat to their king. The girl is fine, by the way. She was cured of the trauma by SCP-999, at which point it was decided she could be returned to her family, so long as all were given Class F amnestics, implanted with new memories, and relocated to a town at least a thousand kilometers away from the children of the Scarlet King's nearest known activity. On the insistence of of the Ethics Committee, the family was also given a seven-figure payout, as were the families of the other SCP-231s. I suppose it was technically malpractice on our part. In case we have any moles for the children of the Scarlet King in the Foundation, as far as anyone else knows, SCP-231-7's family were killed in front of her, as part of of 110 Montauk. I'm sure you're skeptical. Are we insane? How could our 
sweet little tickle monster ever hoped to dethrone a Lovecraftian horror of unparalleled might. Well, SCP-999 is less than a decade old. It's still just a child, and nowhere near its full strength. Even so, its power is incredible. Even brief interaction with SCP-999 can permanently cure depression, PTSD, and more recent experiments have resulted in the complete reformation of D-class personnel who were previously unrepentant sociopaths. This effect is not chemical. It is psychic. And one day, it may grow powerful enough that not even the Scarlet King himself will be immune. The experiment with SCP-682 was most remarkable. Based on multiple Davite texts, including descriptions from 140 itself, we are reasonably certain that 682 is the offspring of the fourth Scarlet Bride. If this is true, then SCP-999 is already strong enough to temporarily quell the malevolence of its own eldritch siblings. One day, 999 could very well be strong enough to permanently reform its family members, just as it reforms human beings. It will not overthrow the Scarlet King by force, but with light and love and laughter that can brighten the blackest of hearts. 999 is not in reality a safe class SCP. It's Thaumiel. It is the best and only weapon we really have against some of the most powerful hostile entities known to exist. By all means, Doctor, enjoy the relative safety of your new position. But do keep in mind that SCP-999 is not a mere pet that we fancy. It is one of our most valuable assets, and it must be safeguarded at all costs. Its safety and well-being are paramount, and you are not at liberty to share this information with anyone who doesn't have a level 5 999 security clearance. As per protocol, unauthorized disclosures of level 5 classified information will result in your termination. This email will automatically delete as soon as you leave the terminal, so feel free to reread it as many times as necessary to remember all of the pertinent information. Take good care of the little tickle monster. The fate of the multiverse may well depend on it. And if anyone asks, I suppose you have an O5 as a secret admirer. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos. And then head on over to patreon.com forward slash dsumerian and pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has, including Sinjariki, who was pledged at $100. It's nice to know that I'm not alone out here, and I will see you all again on Thursday.